Okay, intersections of polar curves. So we know that we've already found solutions of systems. This is a system. It's a system because there are two equations. We know how to find solutions. Sometimes there's one, two, three, there could be a lot of different number of solutions. So we've got to find them. Um, so let's see what we have. First, we can always find solutions by graphing. So let's start there. R equals one, a circle with the center at the origin with a radius of one. There you go. All right, so let's do the second equation. Well, that's another circle, but it's on the x-axis. It's got um, a center right here because it has, it, A is two, so that's the diameter. Um, so here we go. This is the second graph. Okay, so we see that there are two solutions to this. One, two. We can find it with a graph. I have no idea what angle that's at because this is polar, right? So I need an r theta. Let's find, let's use substitution. So we're going to take this r, this r equals 1. Let's put that 1 right here. 1 equals 2 cosine theta. Well, I need to get cosine theta by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get cosine theta equals 1 half. All right, we're in familiar territory. For what angle does the cosine equal 1 half? So theta is equal to, um, well, the cosine, that would be a pi over 3. And then um, also cosine is positive 1 half at 5 pi over 3. Okay, so there we found our theta. So, but I don't, I, I was going to say I don't have an R, but I do. I don't have to plug anything in. I have an R of 1. So my solutions, okay, my solutions are 1 pi over 3, there's one solution, and 1 5 pi over 3. Okay, so not too bad, not too bad. Let's do it again. Of course, it always gets more complicated. Right? So let's sketch first. R equals, this is implicitly a 1. A is 1, diameter of 1. It's on the sign and it axis, the y axis, and it has a diameter of 1. So I can draw that. Maybe not perfectly, but there we go. Now, 1 minus, again, another implicit 1. So now we have an A and a B sine theta. So A equals B. So we know what that is. That is a cardioid. Uh, okay. So um, let's draw that. Well, we have A, A is 1 and B is 1. I'm going to draw a different color. So we're going to intersect. Let's think. It's on the sign. It's negative. So I know it's going to be down here. That's what I first have to say. Where is it, where is it going to be? And it's going to be down here. So a is 1. So one intersection there, intersection there. 1 plus 1 is 2. It's going to have a height of 2. It is a cardioid. So it comes here. And then on the other side, it goes there. Ooh, that was perfect. OK. Now I see three points of intersection. So I need to think about that. OK, I see three points. Let's, let's see what we find algebraically. I'm going to use substitution again. I'm going to take the sine of theta and I'm going to replace it for r because it is r. So sine theta equals 1 minus sine theta. And what am I doing? Remember, I'm solving for theta. So let's add the sine to both sides so we can get all the signs on one side. It's just algebra. That cancels. I'm left with 1 equals 1 sine theta and 1 sine theta is 2 sine theta. Okay, well, I can divide by 2 and I can get the sine of theta equals 1 half. I'm in familiar territory. So wh what do I do? I say, okay, if sine of theta is 1 half, theta equals, where is the sine 1 half? Oh, that's pi over 6. 
Where else is the sine positive 1 half? Well, that would be 5 pi over 6. So there's my theta. Now, r is equal to the sine of theta. It's equal to this. So I, I, what I do is I plug in. I have a theta now, and I can go plug it in. I can plug it into either equation, but I think I'm going to plug it into the first one. So r equals the sine of pi over 6, which equals 1 half. So it's kind of redundant here. And r sine 5 um, pi over 6 is the same thing. So r is 1 half. So my solutions are 1 half pi over 6 and 1 half 5 pi over 6. And you're saying, Miss Kraft, it looked to me like there were three solutions. So what happened to the third solution? I have nothing else to do. So let's look. What point is missing when we solved algebraically? Well, that point that's missing is the point 0, 0. This point is an example of what we call a common point. Common point and is not an, a solution. It's a common point. So if a, an intersection is a solution, you can find it algebraically. If you see an intersection, but it's not so found algebraically, it's called a common point. Okay? All right, keep going. Let's do some examples. If you guys needed to turn it back or slow down the, the tape, that's fine. So graph each system of polar equations, solve algebraically, write down all the intersections and decide if they're common or not, okay? So now we're just going to get right to it. We're going to say substitute. This is going to go right into here. So 4 cosine theta equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. Get everything on one side, so I'm going to subtract. and I get 2 cosine theta equals 2. I'm going to divide by the 2. Cosine theta equals 1. So what is theta? Well, theta equals 0. I could say 0 and 2 pi, but that, I begin repeating at 2 pi. So I am going to um, find r. Okay, r equals 4 times the cosine of theta, which is 0. Well, the cosine of 0 is 1, so that's 4 times 1, which equals 4. So algebraically, I have found one solution, 4, 0. Let's see what happens when we draw the graph. So I'm going to draw, let's draw the um, r equals 4 cosine theta. We know that's on the x-axis. We know over here. We know it has a diameter of 4, so it'll have a center there. And if I draw a good sketch, there we go. There is the second graph. Now let's draw the first graph. So what am I going to have? Well, A equals B. It's on the cosine axis, so it's going to be here. I go from the um, center. A is 2, so I put a dot at 2 and negative 2. The height of my graph is going to be 4. I already see one, an an, the answer. All right, now I'm going to draw the cardioid. So I draw here, and I go here, and I go here, and I go here. Um, now, what I think has happened, actually, it looks like there's intersecting, but I think that this graph is actually wider and this purple graph is supposed to be inside. Uh, and if we graphed it on Desmos, we would see that better. Because the reason I think that is because there's no solutions. There's only one solution. So I think that that purple circle is going to be surrounded and not touching, only touching the red at one point. But we see that. We see this point. So what do we call that? We call this a common point because it appears to intersect it does, but it is not an algebraic solution. But this, um, 4, 0, is a solution. All right, so that's what we want to do. 
Okay, let's do it again. We're going to take substitution, negative 3, 3 cosine 2 theta. Therefore, if I divide by 3, I get cosine of 2 theta equals negative 1. All right, so where is the cosine negative 1? Well, I'm going to say 2 theta then, because I have that in there, equals cosine is negative 1 at pi. But because I have a 2 theta here, I know this is a rose. So I have to think about interval. So I say, OK, theta is less than n, which is 2 times the period. It's even, so it's 2 pi. So it's 2 times 2 pi. It's less than 4 pi and greater than 0. So that's my interval. So cosine is negative at pi. If I go around the circle again and add 2 pi, I'll get 3 pi. If I go around again, I'll get 5 pi, and that's outside the interval. So I stop there. But I am solving for theta, so I divide everything by 2. Theta equals the 2's cancel, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. OK. Now, so now I have two solutions with an r equals negative 3. So my solutions, algebraically, are negative 3 pi over 2 and negative 3, 3 pi over 2. Well, let's graph these and see what we come up with. When I graph r is negative 3, that's just a circle with a radius of 3. There we go. We're graphing um, this rows, and I'm going to graph these points. Um, we have, like, let's think about this rows for a minute. I know it has a length of three on the petals. There is two theta, so I know there are four petals. And because it's cosine, I know one of the petals is going to be anchored here. So it's going to be here and here. Let's, let's graph these points. Go to pi over 2 and negative 3. So that's one point. So this is a solution. Uh, pi over 2, uh, oops, negative 3 pi over 2, sorry. All right, now let's graph the other one. Go to 3 pi over 2, and from here go negative. This is a solution. Negative 3, 3 pi over 2. But I know when I graph rows, if I did this on Desmos, that I would have this solution. I did not find these solution, these two solution, these two points, I did not find algebraically, right? This is um, 3, 0, and this is um, pi 3, OK? Those two are called our common points because we did not find them when we did the solution. So these are common points. Okay, get the idea? All right, let's do one more. Theta equals pi over 3. That's a line. We learned that yesterday. So let's make an approximation. Approximately, that's pi over 3. Let's draw a line. Two sine theta. Well, that is a circle on the y-axis. And there we go. And it's a little fatter than that, but okay. I see my solutions. I see I see two solutions. Let's see if they come out algebraically. Well, huh. I can't set I can't substitute the pi over three in here because it's not r. So but I can put it here. R equals 2 sine pi over 3. <coughs> well, when I think about pi over 3, I know that the sine value is radical 3 over 2, right? Makes a triangle, radical 3 over 2. So R equals 2, the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. When I multiply those together, I get R is radical 3. So my solution, I you see I have a theta and an r. My solution, excuse me, solution is radical 3 pi over 3. Algebraically, that is what I found. So at pi over 3, this distance must be radical 3. Um, so radical 3 
pi over 3 is a solution. And what do we find? This is our common point. Okay? All right. Well, you have some work to do. Give it a try. I've got a couple of examples for you to try. All right. See you next class.